Welcome back to the next video of electrostatics. So in this particular video, we'll be discussing about electric dipole. Now, what do you actually mean by an electric dipole? So basically, electric dipole is a combination of two charges out of which one should be a positive charge and the other should be an equal magnitude of a negative charge and that both the charges should be separated by a finite distance. So as you can see a situation out here, I have drawn two charges, one is plus Q and the other is minus Q. So they are magnitudinally same, but there is an opposite charge. Okay, that's a negative charge. And they are separated by a distance, let me say A. And A should be a finite distance, it cannot be infinite. So such a combination or such a set of two charges is actually known as an electric dipole. Now, as we have already discussed in our previous videos, the electric field direction for a dipole can be seen right here. So the electric field would extend from the positive charge and it would go and enter to the negative charge. So that's how the electric field direction for a dipole would look like. The field would be strongest near the two charges and it would be minimum exactly in between the two charges. Now when we discuss about a dipole, we define a quantity known as dipole moment. So what is dipole moment? Dipole moment is basically a vector quantity. That particular dipole moment is represented by the letter P. Okay, and this dipole moment is given by the formula charge into distance. Where the charge should be taken for the positive charge, as you can see here, that is Q. And the distance is actually the distance between the two charges, which is A right here. So, the dipole moment would be given by Q into A, that would come out as QA. So, as I've already mentioned, this dipole moment is basically a vector quantity. So hence, it would also have a direction. So for a particular dipole, the direction is always from the negative charge towards the positive charge. That is what the direction of a dipole is. It should extend from the negative and end at the positive charge. Okay, that is the direction of a dipole moment. Okay, this is, a, as I said, a vector quantity. Now, the next thing that we need to know about this is as follows. So, as you de define dipole moment here, we need to understand what is the unit of this particular dipole moment. So, from the formula itself, you can guess about the unit. That unit is Coulomb, that would stand for the charge, and for distance, that would be meter. So, Coulomb meter is basically the SI unit of dipole moment. But for uh, when we study this concept in atomic physics as well as in chemistry, we define one more unit that is known as d by. So, d by is also basically one of the units of dipole moment. Okay, so out of the two units, whenever we will be dealing with a numerical, we basically go for the unit of column meter when we discuss in physics. Now, next up, what is actually the significance of a dipole? Okay, the physical significance of a dipole moment is actually to justify whether any kind of molecules are polar or non-polar. Now that is basically a concept of chemistry, but we can still discuss a bit about it in this particular video. So if I give you some kind of molecule, suppose if I talk about homonuclear molecules such as O2, N2, these molecules are non-polar. These molecules are non-polar in nature. But if I say about a water molecule, H2, this is basically a polar molecule. Now what do you mean by polar and non-polar molecules? Okay, the basic difference by the definition of dipole moment, if we can say, is the non-polar molecules are those molecules which do not have a permanent dipole moment in absence of an electric field. They do not have any net dipole moment. Okay, but for the polar molecules, they are aligned in such a way that they have a permanent dipole moment even in the absence of electric field. So those kind of molecules are known as polar molecules. That is why we call water as a polar solvent. Okay, now in order to understand it this a bit clearly, you can check it like such. If I draw O2, if I draw the structure of O2, it's a double bonded molecule. You can uh, learn it in chemistry itself. It's a double bonded molecule. So since both of the molecules are, sorry, both of the atoms of oxygen are exactly equal and alike in all respects, hence the net dipole moment cancels out and it sums up to zero. But if I talk about a polar molecule like H2O, I can draw it up here, you can check it. The structure of H2 is basically band shape. If you can check it right here, it's basically band shape. Now, out of both the molecules, 
Okay, if you check out of both, sorry, both the atoms, oxygen and hydrogen, one of the atom is highly electronegative. And which one is that? That is oxygen. This is highly electronegative. And here, hydrogen is basically a positive molecule in compared to oxygen. So, all the electrons of hydrogen would be attracted towards oxygen because it's basically a highly electronegative molecule. So, since the electrons would be attracted towards oxygen, hence the dipole moment would have a direction from where? From hydrogen to oxygen. Okay, so that is how we understand about the dipole moment directions. Okay, and basically, if the net dipole moment add up to a non zero value, then we call that molecule to be a polar molecule. So, in that way, oxygen is actually sorry, water is actually a polar molecule, but O2 is a non polar molecule. Okay, so that's what's the physical significance of dipole moment.